Good Tuesday morning, everyone. I hope to communicate in such a way that you know what the parent facilitator expectations are every step of the way. Um, in this edition of Tuesday Morning News, we will need to ensure that our 2014-15 notebooks get boxed up properly and that our 2015-16 binders are set up for this year and ready to go. First step is you're going to go find your parent facilitator binder and you're going to take everything out. So I've taken everything out of this binder. Once you take everything out of the binder, <clears throat> you're going to want to box it up. I like to use these large accordion files and I rubber band them, make sure I don't lose anything, and I always label them. This one is labeled with the school name and the year. So take everything out of your folders, box it up, keep it on the shelf for five years in case we need it. We do monitor, so we will be out at least twice during the year to look at your folders. Okay. There are, however, a few things you need to keep in your folder, and I'll try to go through this slowly, um, but you can watch this over and over as you need to. The first thing is there are three pages that are your table of contents. Do not put your table of contents away. Leave your table of contents here. Then you have your tabs 3-1 through 3-12. If you don't have tabs, use that form that I sent you last week and say that you need tabs and I will get them out to you. First, in section 3-6, you're going to go to section 3-6 and this is where your parent policy is. In your parent policy, you're going to want to take the parent policy from 2014-15, make a copy, put it in section 3-6, and that way, when you make your new policy, you'll have your old policy and your updated policy. The next section is section 3.8. And 3.8 is where you have your compact. Same thing. You're going to want to take your compact from 2014-15 last year, make a copy, put it in section 3.8, and when you make your new compact, you can put your new compact here. The next section is going to be section 312. When you get to section 312, this is where you're going to put those tabs that I gave you at the training, January through December. And section 312, that is where you are going to put all your Engage One activities for the month. So this is where all the academic activities happen. In July and August, you may have already had some activities. You may have had open houses, sneak -a peeks, um, anything that you've already done, make sure that documentation gets there. And the last tab is 313. In section 313, the only thing that we need here is your sign-in for your monthly parent resource room. So if you have a parent resource room and parents have come to visit or come to volunteer, that's where that goes. If you have a question about an activity and you don't know whether to put it into 312 or um, 313, just give me a call and let me know. Now, let's talk about one other thing. At the training, you receive two folders. The middle school and high schools are going to use blue folders, and the elementary schools are going to use yellow folders. You just fill it out, put your name, put Title I, who's it coming from, what school, and it'll come right to us. Very easy. On the back, there's a sticker that is a checklist. Let's go through the things that are on the checklist so that you know where to put them and what they're called. Okay. The first item says ESEA Flexibility Waiver on school letterhead. I emailed you a folder with a link. The link is called the Help Desk. The Help Desk folder has all of the documents you need. There's only a few documents in there right now because I'm only going to give you the documents when they're needed. It's not actually called the ESEA waiver anymore because we no longer are under the waiver. And this is why I didn't pass those forms out. It is actually called the Title I school designation template. The Title I school designation template. When you open that folder, you're going to want to download that folder or give that folder to, give that document to your academic coach. The document is there in English and in Spanish. Your academic coach can put in all of the data and all the school information. When they give it back to you, you must make sure that it is on school letterhead. You must make sure that it is on school letterhead. Make sure the date 
is there. The date should be sometime between August the 3rd and August the 30th, 3rd through August the 30th. Once you print that out, you're going to actually put that into your folder and then you're going to check off that you have it in there. And I only need one copy. Because everything has to be in multiple ways, this must be on your school website. Um, you can send a phone call home that it went home and you can hand it out to your students. You don't have to mail it because that can be expensive, but you can send it home with a progress report, notebook, folder, whatever you have going home in the next couple of weeks. The next item is the parent's right to know. Oh, but let me tell you where that waiver goes. In your notebook, you'll go back to the table of contents and the ECA letter, that letter we said goes into section 3-2. So you're going to go to your tab, 3-2, and you're going to put it there. So make sure that gets in your folder. Um, the next item is actually the parent's right to know. And in the parent's right to know, um, that is in the brown newspaper-like item that is in the Cobb County Parent Information Guide that we sent home in the first day of school folders. You're going to want to put that in section 3-3. Put that in section 3-3. And send me one copy of that. I just need one. You need one copy in your folder, and I need one copy in my folder. There's nothing you need to do for that except send it to me. The third box is Focus and Priority School. I've already met with the Focus and Priority Schools, so don't worry about that. You can just put a big X across it because we've already did it. Um, and the FLP notification letter, you don't need that either unless you're a priority or focus school. Then it says monthly parent involvement. That's what you'd put in section 312 or 313. So this month is really, really easy. You should know where each of those items go. You have two ways to contact me. Um, you can pick up the phone, um, send me an email, but I would really prefer that you use the Engage One Help Desk folder to find your information or the Engage One Help link. And that comes to my phone, it goes to my computer, to my laptop, everywhere, so that I'm often in schools, and this way I can respond to you very, very quickly. All right, so the next couple of days, I will be at the Parent Involvement Update with the State Department, and I will find out what exactly is needed for our professional development and get that PowerPoint to you on our next Tuesday morning news together. If you have any questions whatsoever, just email me at the Engage One Help. If you need to find your documents, go to the Engage One Help Desk. That's it for now. See you next Tuesday.